Hey, this is Justin for breakingacre.com, and in today's video, we're going to talk about how to run a next buyer analysis in a real estate investment. So if you've heard of a next buyer analysis and want to know what it is and how it's actually used in private equity real estate, make sure to stick around for this video. Now, if you're new here on this channel, we talk about real estate investment careers and real estate financial analysis. So if you're looking to break into the real estate investment industry for the first time, or you're looking to do your first real estate deal, make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit that notification bell as well. So when you're doing any sort of real estate investment analysis, usually you're going to be forecasting cash flows out into the future, usually somewhere between five and 10 years down the road. And at some point at the end of that analysis, you're going to need to come up with some sort of assumption on what you're actually going to sell that property for at the end of your hold period. But to come up with a sale value in commercial real estate, it's not just as simple as taking a simple percentage increase from the value of the property at the time you actually bought the deal. So because commercial real estate is bought by investors who are looking for cash flow and appreciation, rather than home buyers looking for a place to live, real estate investments are often purchased based on the income that that property can generate. So when you're modeling out future cash flows on a deal and trying to figure out what that sale price is going to be, you're going to need to do some calculations around what that next buyer is going to pay for the property based on the income that you believe it will generate at the time you actually sell the deal. So say for example, you have a 10 year analysis and at the end of 10 years, you assume that you're going to sell the deal. Well, in this case, you would need to make an assumption about what that operating income is going to be in year 11 of your ownership period or actually the year after you would actually sell the deal. This way you're able to analyze the deal from a next buyer perspective and that's where that next buyer analysis comes into play. Now there are really three main ways to run a next buyer analysis and that's what we're going to cover in today's video. So let's start with next buyer analysis method number one and that is the cap rate valuation approach. Now this is by far the most commonly used method in real estate financial analysis to assume some sort of a sale price. And to do a next buyer analysis based on a cap rate valuation approach, this is a very simple process. So if we assume we buy an apartment property and we're going to hold that property for 10 years, all we would need to do to estimate a sale value of our property is to figure out what we believe that net operating income is going to be in year 11 of our analysis or the full year after we sell the property. And then we need to divide that by what we assume is going to be the cap rate for similar properties at that time or what we assume is going to be our exit cap rate. Now, if you want to go into more detail on how to actually set exit cap rates, I've created a video that you can check out and I'll link that in the description below. But for now, just know that you need to assign that exit cap rate to the net operating income of the year after you sell the deal. So if you plan on selling the deal at the end of year five, you need to assign that exit cap rate to the net operating income for year six. And if you plan on selling a deal at the end of year seven, then you need to assign that exit cap rate to what you assume that net operating income will be in year eight and so on, depending on the year that you plan to sell the deal. So as I mentioned, this is going to be the most widely used approach that you're going to see in real estate financial models. Now that said, many of the most sophisticated financial institutions that have investments in real estate will also run method number two, and that's going to be a next buyer analysis with an IRR based valuation. Now this approach requires quite a bit more analysis because not only are you just assuming what the net operating income is going to be for the year after you sell the deal, but you're also trying to incorporate what you believe the total cash flows for your next buyer are going to be over a five, seven or 10 year period. So this includes things like capital expenses. This includes things like downtime, lease expirations, and much more that isn't included just in your net operating income figure. So if we use a 10 year hold period example, what you're going to do to do a next buyer analysis is you're going to actually model out the cash flows for years 11 through 21 of your analysis to figure out what those cash flows are likely to be for that next buyer to arrive at a purchase price for that next buyer that's going to make sense based on their required internal rate of return. So the analysis gets pretty detailed here and involves not only setting an exit cap rate 
for your sale, but also an exit cap rate for the next buyer's sale as well, and also incorporating a targeted internal rate of return for that next buyer as well. Now this is an extremely high level of analysis and definitely isn't necessary in order to get an educated assumption about what your sale price is going to be. And like I said, this is very rarely used only in the most sophisticated and technical scenarios. That said, if you do wanna get really granular with your analysis and have an additional data point to back up what you believe your sale price is going to be, an IRR based valuation for an next buyer analysis can be a great way to do that. Now finally, number three and a far less sophisticated approach to valuation is going to be your replacement cost next buyer analysis. Now usually this isn't going to be used specifically to set an exit price, but really as a benchmark to make sure that the exit price that you are assuming using one or both of the above methods is going to be a realistic target for that next buyer. So let's say that today you're analyzing a 100 unit apartment building that you wanna buy. And let's say you're buying the property at $200,000 per unit today and replacement cost today, or the cost to build a similar product in a similar location would be $240,000 per unit. Now, since you're buying below replacement cost, this is a good indicator that you're not overpaying for the property because it's going to cost developers more to build similar comparable product in a similar area. So in that scenario, to run that replacement cost analysis, what you would do is you would grow that replacement cost today at an annual assumed growth rate for every year of your analysis and ultimately figure out what that replacement cost is likely to be when you go to sell the deal. Then from there, it's just a process of comparing what you assume that sale price is going to be based on one of the two methods we discussed earlier on in this video and figuring out if you're still selling the property below replacement cost. Because if you assume that you sell the property above replacement cost, that means that developers can come in and build newer, nicer product at a lower cost than you're assuming a buyer would come in and buy your older existing product that likely can't generate the kind of rents that new product would be able to generate. So in that case, it's a good benchmark to know that your exit assumption might be a little bit high and you may need to bring that back to replacement cost or even lower. So oftentimes the cap rate valuation approach and the replacement cost approach are used together with the replacement cost approach just being used as a benchmark to make sure that your exit sale price is realistic. So I hope that was helpful. If you wanna learn how to actually build out a next buyer analysis using that IRR based valuation, check out the Advanced Real Estate Financial Modeling Bootcamp and I'll link that in the description below and that'll walk you step by step through how to build a next buyer analysis using that IRR valuation approach. And if you want access to all break into CRE courses, all break into CRE models, and some additional one-on-one -on -one support from me, make sure to check out Break Into CRE Academy, and I'll link that in the description as well. So if you like this video and want to see more content like this, make sure to let me know by hitting that like button, subscribing to the channel, and sharing this with anyone else who might find this helpful. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.